All right. So, yeah, welcome again to the Data Vote Friday. Uh, my name is Julian Brunner. I'm a BI consultant at Scalefree. And yeah, we run the session every Friday, 11 a.m. Central European time. And in this session, we're going to answer questions about uh, data world, big data, um, basically any data-driven topics. And uh, yeah, you can submit your questions uh, in advance. I will show you the uh, Google form link um, in the end of the session um, or directly here in the chat. So um, today's session is about, um, you can see it, right? My screen, yes. Yeah, today's session is about um, yeah processing uh, streaming data, and um, yeah we received a question um, about how to um, process real time messages um, in a JSON format, and if there are any best practices how to model um, yeah, real time data in Data Vault. Um, so. I've prepared one um, architecture. We discussed it already, I think, a couple of months ago, but let's uh, quickly go over it again because it fits to the um, question. Um, so we have uh, in the real-time flow, there are multiple layers implemented. So first, um, the message is delivered by the publisher um, to a message queue. Typically, this is not done directly, but via WebSocket uh, REST interface or something similar. Um, the messages are then picked up by um, yeah, the raw data vault uh, loader. And this role is responsible for ingesting the incoming raw data into the raw data vault. So in um, real-time systems, this is not uh, done or well, this is done directly um, into the raw data vault layer. And um, yeah, there's no need to store the data in the data lake per se. However, we recommend to fork all messages into the data lake. So um, you can see it here is one fork to the data lake and one um, to the raw data vault. And one reason is to capture the data in its original format especially when the message queue contains a lot of different data flows, uh, which are not yet all catch captured by the raw data vault. And um, yeah, once the data is needed uh, to produce, let's say, new business value, um, the messages are analyzed and loaded um, into the raw data vault from the um, data lake. Yeah, so um, once the raw data vault uh, loader has inserted the records into the raw data vault. The message um, is forwarded to another message queue for the next layer, which is the um, business vault processor. And um, this one, um, yeah, will build the, the business logic. So the business logic can be based solely uh, on the incoming messages or message or use data from um, yeah, either raw data vault or um, business data vault. And you can see this um, yeah, arrow indicates that it can load data into the raw data vault, but also um, yeah, read data from the um, uh, sorry the business vault and uh, read data from the business vault as well, and also from the raw data vault. Um, after the process is done, the data is sent to a dashboard or application, um, or if the um, payload is huge. Uh, only a notification is sent to inform the application or the dashboard that they can do a refresh. So this will work because um, all the information marts are virtualized, right? So um, whenever the business world processor is done and um, the business logic is written into the business world and raw data world, um, the information marts or the, yeah, the virtualized information marts is refreshed uh, by, by nature, right? Um, okay. So um, I've created two JSON examples uh, because streaming services often use um, semi-structured data to deliver information um, because yeah, of its flexibility. And at the same time, this flexibility can be a problem because with every new message, the schema 
could change, right? So um, in this example, we have uh, a country object. Um, we have uh, uh, yeah, a code attribute, which could be um, a business key, for example, and um, three additional descriptive attributes uh, offset currency and continent. So it's a really um, small example. So this is the first message. And um, then we receive a second method, message with the business key again, all the three other attributes and an additional um, um, attribute, which is the time zone. Um, yeah, so you see with every new message, the schema might change. Let's say, or let's imagine uh, with the third or fourth um, message, the uh, schema uh, change even more. There might be like three more columns um, or three more attributes or some attributes are missing or something. So um, it's really hard sometimes to handle JSON, um, uh, JSON files. And one, yeah, one, uh, solution or well, let's let's yeah let's talk about the solution so there's no best solution for every case it depends as always but um be sure about what data structure is expected um in many cases the easiest way is to store those messages in a non historized link so you would have um a standard link structure um with all technical um um columns and one column for the whole message. So in uh, Snowflake, for example, it would be a variant column, uh, which stores the whole um, JSON object. And you would have, in most of the cases, something like a message ID or event ID, which could be, or which you could use for the link hash key input. And um, so for the for the hash function. And yeah, this non-historized non link can handle um, highly changing um, data structures. Uh, let's imagine if you flatten the JSON structure first, you will potentially end up with storing a lot of null values when the schema changes, right? So that could be a problem and um, or yeah, hard to handle. And yeah, additional... Additionally, the non stress link is fast to insert um, due to the um, insert logic. Uh, that's great if you receive a lot of messages. And yeah, after you stored the messages in the non stress link, you can build then data vault structures on top of it, uh, which you yeah, could virtualize as well uh, in the best case. So you flatten the um, JSON structure. Um, yeah, many or most of the um, cloud databases uh, today have good functionality on um, flattened JSON files. Uh, for example, Snowflake has huge possibilities to process it. And um, I think they even catch up with um, yeah, processing possibilities of XML files as well. Um, yeah, so there's still the option um, let's say option two, the second option to flatten the structure before loading um, the raw data vault and integrate the data like in standard hub sling satellites. But I would only recommend it uh, when you have a quite consistent schema um, or when your database is really slow in processing JSON objects or processing uh, semi-structured data um, in general. Um, in this case, I would Additionally, store the message uh, in a data lake uh, to not lose any data in case of um, yeah, un unexpected uh, schema changes. Um, yeah, so basically that's the idea how to handle um, JSON or, or streaming data. Are there any questions about this topic? Yeah, as I said, if you have any um, questions afterwards, feel free to uh, send them um, via the form. Um, so yeah, that's basically it for today's session. Um, yeah, if you're interested in a Data Vault community, you can uh, scan this QR code and join the Data Vault Innovators 
on this platform, you can ask questions um, and find interesting topics about Data Vault, basically. Yeah, if you have further questions, as I said, you can use this form uh, to submit uh, your questions, sfr.ee slash dvfriday. Um, yeah, otherwise, I um, wish you a nice weekend and see you hopefully next Friday. Thanks for coming. Bye bye. Thanks for joining today. If you'd like to discuss this further, give us a call on the number below here and we're happy to discuss this with you. See you next time. Have a nice weekend. Bye bye.